Chapter 11 Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing, usually referred to as GD&T. This chapter introduces the basic concepts of the tolerances and the geometry. Really, the only true way to dimension a machine drawing is to use geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. It gives the size and shape of the object in the best possible way. So we're going to just introduce a few basic rules. Rule number one, and size limits envelope um, go hand in hand. So rule number one says, unless otherwise specified, the limits of size of a feature prescribe the extent within which variations of geometric form, as well as size, are allowed. So what does that mean? Well, before we get into it, we need to talk about a couple terms and take them extremely literally. They're modifiers. Okay, depending on the parts tolerance, that's the amount that it is allowed to vary from a um, perfect size, we can say MMC, maximum material conditions. So for a solid cylinder, for example, it would be its maximum diameter when it has the most meat. But for a hole, a hole would have its most meat when it is as small as possible. The least material condition says apply this geometric tolerance when the part's as small as it can be or the hole is as large as it can be. And then regardless of feature size, RFS says apply the tolerance no matter what the size of the part. So, here we have two parts. A, we have on the left, we have a little cylinder with chamfered ends on it. And its size, its diameter, can vary between 12.2 and 11.8. Here we have a hole through a solid stock with the same measurements. Now, if you don't have any type of modifiers geometric GD and T modifiers, then this is how you can interpret it. One, the cylinder can be tapered with the maximum on one end and the minimum on the other because it does fit within two concentric cylinders, one at 12.2 and one at 11.8. It's still within those limits. If we make the part as small as it possibly can be along its entire length, then we can bend the cylinder until its extreme points are 12.2. So it can take any shape as long as it stays within that limit. Over here you can see the hole is tapered or the hole is on an angle. Well, it's bent, okay? But it's still within the upper and the lower tolerance limits. So I'm trying to show here the small circle in the center is the, the low side of the tolerance and the outside circle is the large size. So this can be hourglass shaped. It can be quite peculiar, peculiarly shaped, okay? It can bulge out. And these are exaggerations, obviously, but it fits within the tolerance limits. So here's a part where we have surfaces. And the surface, the rectangular prism, uh, you can see here, I've got a red zone showing the amount that it can vary. So between, this will be two millimeters apart, between 16 and 18, between 20 and 22, it can be two millimeters apart here. And this is a, a one shape it can take on. Okay. It can have even uh, like a treasure chest top. This is on an angle, but it's still within the 11 and 9 limits. So if we want to check for compliance, in the first one we have checking the geometric form with a ring gauge. So this is the ring gauge. Basically, it can be a, like a hockey puck with a hole in it. And the hole, is, in this case, is at maximum material condition. 8.0. And if the 
apart, the cylinder is at its least material condition, it can bend. If it's at its maximum material condition, then it's going to have to be a perfect form. It's going to have to fit in here, okay, without any bend. The hole we can check. Um, here we have a plug gauge at 6.8. So this plug gauge held perpendicular to the hole. If it fits all the way through, then it sh the part the hole should be okay as long as it doesn't ever go over its 7.0 uh, upper limit.